everybody in here, sitting here in the tiny house, not having coffee today. I'm having tea, peppermint tea, because my tummy is a little upset. I was up in the middle of the night last night. Um, oh, and one thing too, that kitty, that kitty was making a lot of noise last night, and I captured it on film. Not, well, I mean the sounds. I didn't capture the actual kitty, but I don't know. I'm wondering if she's had some kittens, because, well, here, let me let you listen to this. Sounds like it's in the shed. And then in the middle of the night, oh, this poor thing just kept meowing. And I could hear it right out back from the tiny house, like it, it's in the shed. But it sounded like maybe a kitten meowing. So I went outside this morning to see if there was anything in the shed, and there was nothing in the shed. Um, it looked like that little box that I had made for the chickens. All of the bedding had been kind of scratched out of it, but that may have been the chickens in there doing that. I don't know. Um, but look, they did do this. Woke up this morning to my solar panels on the ground. <laughs> wonder if the kitty was out here playing. Uh, no big deal. I'll just pick them back up. Even that one is kind of not exactly where I put it the last time. Weird. I think if I go out later today, I might look just kind of in the woods, you know, around the back of the tiny house and whatnot and just see if maybe there's some kittens out there. I think it's just that white cat, but I don't know. Maybe she's had kittens. Um, all I know is she was meowing all night long. Anyway, let's move on. I wanted to show you guys those buffalo, red buffalo check uh, bags that Michael B. sent me where I put them. The first one I'm not going to show you. The biggest one, I was going to use it to put wood in. But I've decided that's going to make a wonderful, perfect clothes hamper. It fits right back in that area. And so I put all my dirty clothes in it. So it, it's wonderful. So here, take a look at what I did with these little bags that Michael B. sent. I'm using one of the bags, the second biggest bag, just to fill with you know, cardboard kindling stuff I'm going to throw, you know, into the fire to get it going real quick. And I've got this other bag, the smallest one over here, and I put my fire starters in it and my kindling, wood, and all that kind of stuff. And, yep, it is far enough away. I've already tested it and used it. Oh, this is a mess back here. Um, it, it doesn't get hot enough where either of these bags are located for them to catch on fire. So that's awesome. And remember those little hooky things that uh, Michael B. also sent? They are wonderful. They've got a little adhesive strip on the back and you can put them on something and take them off several times. So let me show you the one, two, three, four different places that I've put them so far. This is my kitchen area over here. And I've just put one of those little hooks here and you can take them off and put them back on and whatnot. Several times, I've put one little lantern over here. I've put a little, you know, a little light switch right by the door. And that is great. So if it's dark and I'm coming inside, all I have to do is turn it on. This is my little pantry area. And that's my little shelf rack. Inside here, I've put... Oh, let's see if I can do this with one hand. I've just put a little tap light right here. Whoops. So all I need to do is click it on and it illuminates not only this in here, but also my spice rack. It's a mess, but it's functional. Yeah, I think that's pretty cool. And then right here by this window, right by where I sit, I put another one and just hung it on there. And it works so good. It's perfect. There's nothing like a bunch of beautiful chickens to brighten your day. Hello, handsome. Yes. 
Have some crackers. Yep. I'm giving them crackers along with feed and some mealworms. They love crackers. Only four eggs today, but that's okay. It's still early. I might get a couple more. I really think this is going to be all today for me as far as the video goes. Uh, my stomach is still bothering me, and it's weird because Mr. Lucas across the street said his wife and his wife's stomach was bothering her yesterday. So I don't know. Maybe I'm having sympathy stomach problems, so I'm just going to take it easy today and uh, maybe make some chicken and rice. Mm -hmm. Build a nice fire. Anyhow, that's all I got. That's not all I got for you today, you guys. Something just really, really weird just happened. And I'm going to tell you what it is. So I was out looking at my worm bin because um, I was collecting a few worms. It's been wet around here. I'm putting them in the worm bin. Oh, and I do have cocoons, by the way, <laughs> in my worm bin now. So that's good. And I see these two, this young couple, um, walking the property next door. And um, I just kind of looked up. I, I didn't pay any attention. I, I, I thought that there was another piece of land in between Mr. T's and mine. And apparently there's not. Um, and I talked to the couple, what's going on? You know, I figured um, they were buying that other piece of land in between mine, a very small piece. What you doing, Rossi? <laughs> Anyhow, let me try and explain this. Um, and they said that, well, we're buying the property next door. And I'm like, oh, good, good. I'm going to have this young couple next door. And, um, you know, that's great. They're, they sound nice. They, uh, they've got plans and whatnot for their property. And, um, and they said, well, who's, who's that up in the camper? And I'm like, <laughs> I didn't want to say too much. And they says, well, is he your, a friend of yours? And I'm like, no. And they're like, we don't want to get anybody in trouble. And I'm like, well, why would you get anybody in trouble? Apparently, that lot, there's just my lot, and then there's a lot next door. There's nothing in between. Mr. T is squatting on that land. He did not buy that land. That land now belongs to that young couple. And they were out there planning things and trying to figure out, you know, how they're going to get this squatter off of their property. And they said they probably won't be moving here till March, but, um, what was that? Some kind of a notification. Mr. T has got to go. So I'm going to call the actual property you know, broker, the West Tennessee landman, and see what's going on. Just make sure that these people aren't giving me a, um, a load of bull, too. I don't think that they are, um, because they're very familiar with this area. They knew somebody who owned this lot before, um, before me. So, but isn't that ironic, you guys? Isn't that ironic that Mr. T never owned that land? He... <laughs> He had just basically pulled up and started squatting on it, you know? And here I am. I'm just so gullible, you guys. So gullible. So, um, I couldn't be happier than it is the couple that, the young couple that's going to be living there. And there's children and they've got dogs. And they're, they say they're friendly dogs. I'm sure there are. Um, they've had chickens before and they want to get chickens again. Um, they just from the way they talked it seemed like they were in the same kind of mindset so I'm just feeling very blessed the Lord does work in mysterious ways and I've learned a lot from this I've learned that I need to not be so gullible and extend myself to people who are strangers right off the bat kind of get to know them and if I had waited a little bit longer I wouldn't have extended myself as much as I had um, but yeah, Mr. T is squatting on that land, and it, that land does not belong to him. It now belongs to that young couple, so I'll keep you updated on that. Gosh, weird. Anyhow, that's all I got for you guys today. See you in the next video. Thanks for watching everybody. I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you like, subscribe, hit the bell, and y'all have a good one.